second petition of the Lord's Prayer, Jesus teaches us to pray, Thy kingdom come, your kingdom come. So the question immediately becomes, well, what is the kingdom of God? A chapter like Mark 10 can help us understand what the people expected the kingdom of God to be, as you get something like the the children coming to Jesus, as he's on his way to Jerusalem, he's preparing for Holy Week, the disciples think they're going there to occupy the city, to put a throne there and a kingdom again for Israel. And so when the kids are coming to Jesus, the disciples are pushing those families away, rebuking them. Why? Well, it's not because children are entirely worthless, it's because children have nothing to offer a marching army, which is what they think themselves to be at this point. And so they're trying to push them away. And then we get the rich young man. He comes to Jesus and, well, what does a rich young man have to offer an army? Everything. One, he's a young man. He can fight. But two, he's also wealthy. And his wealth can either be used leading up to the battle, supplying arms and things for the the soldiers, or it can be used after the battle for the sake of building up a kingdom. He has a lot to offer, and so when Jesus drives him away after accepting the kids, the disciples are beside themselves and asking the question, if he can't be saved, who can be? And then you also get the account of James and John, asking if they can sit at the right and left hand of Jesus when he comes into his kingdom. That is, they want the positions of authority and power in this new kingdom of Israel that they think is coming. And then there's the blind and the crowds pushing the blind away. Because again, what good is a blind man in battle? You're not going to put a sword in his hand and let him fight next to you. That could end very poorly for you. Instead, uh, Jesus again has mercy and heals him. Jesus takes everything they think they know. He flips it upside down because, as he tells Pilate, his kingdom is not of this world. His kingdom is all that he rules and all that he reigns over, and that includes you and it includes me. It includes us as the people of God. We have been welcomed into his kingdom, into his family, where we are called co-heirs with Jesus. We get to live with and reign with Jesus Christ forever. So his kingdom is not a political sphere in the earthly realm. His kingdom is all of his people, the holy nation that is the church, which you can read about in 1 Peter chapter 2 as well. You are part of God's kingdom, and his kingdom has already come upon you. So as we pray this prayer each day, we are praying that God would continue to include us in that good work of his kingdom of sharing that message with those around us.